Okay. See. You can go. So, okay. Good morning. Welcome to the third to the second webinar held in the framework of the merit project. Um, during this, okay. Second. So during this uh, this webinar, um, we will. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm trying to share a presentation with you. And uh, here we are. Okay, the, the, the topic of uh, the second uh, uh, merit webinar will be opportunities for research and innovation cooperation offered in the framework of the, um, the work program 2018-2020 in Horizon 2020. There will be um, a specific focus on the fourth industrial revolution and the digital single market strategy. Speakers uh, is myself, Virginia Bessanti from Siam Bari, uh, Davide Menero from ID Consulting, and Leonardo Piccinetto from uh, Europe from Business. Um, we are all partners in the Merit project. Now, um, as I said, uh, today's agenda includes an overview of the opportunities for research and innovation cooperation offered by the new Horizon 2020 work program, uh, 2018, uh, the work programs 2018-2020, uh, uh, the fourth industrial revolution and its consequences on, on business, uh, governments and people, and the impact of the fourth industrial revolution on the Mediterranean countries. Uh, and then uh, concluding the digital single market areas linked to the fourth industrial revolution in the framework of Horizon uh, 2020. Now, uh, just very quickly uh, as a reminder of what is Horizon 2020, the, the, is, uh, this is probably uh, the, the, the biggest uh, uh, European Union program for research and innovation that covered the, uh, the, the um, covered the years between 2014 and 2020. And it invested, uh, it has, is, mm, it's foreseen to, uh, by at the end of the program, 79 billion euro will be invested over uh, seven years. And uh, um, this, uh, the, 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 the specific features, some features of the program is that uh, first of all, it wants to couple research with innovation to secure Europe's uh, global competitiveness. Uh, this is why, because Europe is very strong from the point of view of research, but uh, it's lacking, um, uh, it's, uh, it's lacking that, um, uh, it wants to be more, uh, wants to be stronger in turn in research in to innovation and uh, processes and products that can reach the market. Then uh, there is an investment in our future for smart, sustainable, inclusive growth and jobs, and an, an emphasis on excellent science, industrial leadership, uh, and societal challenges. Those are the, the three pillars of Horizon 2020. There is a strong focus on the small and medium enterprises because uh, in, uh, in the view of turning research into innovation, coupling research with innovation, the small and medium enterprises are, uh, are very important, are crucial elements. And the other feature is that uh, it, preview, it involves envisages simplified procedures and it's open to the world. That means that uh, um, every country is, um, is allowed to participate with some uh, specifications. Now, uh, the work program, this is, uh, those are the three main pillars of uh, Horizon 2020. Uh, as we said, to tackle societal challenges, we, we have seven societal challenges that will be tackled, uh, health, demographic, change and well-being, food security, sustainable agriculture and the bio the economy, secure, clean and efficient energy, smart, green and integrated transport, uh, supply, raw materials, resource efficiency and climate action, inclusive, innovative and reflective societies and secure and innovative societies. Then there is another pillar which is creating industrial leadership and competitive frameworks and this part will be um, will be treated in depth by the following presentation, presentations of Leonardo and David. And uh, uh, there is excellence in the science space which includes a frontier research, a European Research Center, 
future emerging technologies, uh, skills and career development uh, with Marie Curie uh, actions and research structures. As um, uh, considering, spe specifically considering the work program 2018-2020, uh, uh, we can see that there will be 30 billion euro invested in research and innovation in these last three years, 18, 19 and 20. Um, now, this is, as we said, we, of, we want to, uh, we, we would like to show uh, opportunities for researchers, especially from our uh, focus areas, which is the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, we must say in general that opportunity, targeted opportunities are limited. This is because also of the launching of the Prima initiative. Um, but uh, there are some opportunities. International cooperation is very important uh, for Horizon 2020 and, and also uh, in, the work, in the last work program. Um, so why you should participate in Horizon 2020? But there are several reasons. First of all, because uh, uh, the, the research and innovation projects are quite ambitious. Uh, second, because there will be um, mobility to Europe of researchers from other countries is strongly uh, fostered, is uh, strongly um, uh, it's promoted and it's wanted. There is an access to new no networks and alliances, which is crucial when you know uh, researchers uh, want to create a partnership and be part of consortia. This is the Best, the best option to, to be part of important networks in several areas of research and innovation. There will be new business opportunities and visibility for research, access to world-class research infrastructures. There is an opportunity for everybody to tackle all the global challenges together, and there will be opportunities for research funding. As I said, the, the, sorry, before I was mistaken, the, the, one of the pillars is uh, European Research and Council opportunities. These are for uh, excellent researchers that want to uh, be part of uh, groundbreaking research in Europe. Uh, so there are no thematic priorities, and this is very important because we'll allow uh, researchers to take, all uh, researchers belonging to different areas of research to take part uh, it's a bottom-up approach and uh, it's investigator driven. The principles are is one principal investigator and team, one house institution in the UR, uh, our country, or um, EU or country associated to Horizon 2020. This, the criterion is excellence and 50% uh, uh, of the research has to be done in Europe. The projects must, uh, um, the duration of each project must be, uh, must be uh, up to five years. These are some details about the, the funding of European Research Council. Um, uh, as you can see, uh, it, it will be, um, it's mainly uh, for experienced researchers um after a phd and uh, um, researchers can join the european research council joining projects as a team member uh, information about this specific pillar can be found in the link that i've added in the presentation that you will probably receive after the webinar uh, by email then there is the uh, future emerging technologies but Honest, uh, this will be developed following in the following presentation. So I'm trying to um, manage time so that you can have an extensive explanation in the next uh, 40 minutes. Um, uh, what is very interesting for uh, researchers from everywhere is the Marie Zlodowska Curie actions, because again, uh, they allow the participation of all researchers, uh, young, re uh, young and senior researchers. Um, and the administrative staff involved in research institutions. Uh, they uh, cover, um, they allow uh, individual researchers to, to present their own uh, concept, and they uh, also allow researchers to be of belonging to institutions to take part in exchanges uh, to uh, develop uh, sp specific areas of research. Um, as again, the principles are it's open to all career stages and nationalities is a bottom-up approach, international, intersectoral, because another important aspect is that research institutions and uh, enterprises are involved in the exchange and inter is an interdisciplinary career knowledge exchange. 
there are different kinds of funding, individual follow, uh, fellowships, uh, this is for individual researchers. The innovative training networks, uh, it, they, are, they involve institutions and researchers and the research and innovation staff exchange, which is the international intersector cooperation. Uh, the other aspect is research infrastructure and again, leadership in enabling and industrial technologies, which will be dealt the following later on. Now, uh, societal challenges, these are the areas where probably um, most of the people uh, involved by the MERI project uh, um, would be interested. Um, they, the societal challenge, there are seven societal challenges. Uh, you can see the list, so I'm not uh, reading them all. And uh, I, um, there are specific objectives which are very important to everybody. That's why international cooperation is, uh, uh, is required, is, is uh, strongly uh, wanted by the European Commission. Um, trying to go a bit faster. Um, this is another area, science within for society, which is a cross-sectoral uh, area uh, for calls and topics. Now, uh, going uh, straight to the work program priorities, they, there are five main priorities. Um, uh, all of them take into consideration the COP21 Paris Agreement and the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals. So the main priorities in these work programs, uh, in these work programs are increased investments in sustainable development and climate related research and innovation, integrating digitalization in all industrial technologies and societal challenges, strengthening international research and innovation cooperation, and this is the part that is very interesting for us. And uh, societal resilience and market creating innovation. Now, as an example of international cooperation, I haven't listed all the topics uh, within the calls that can, uh, that allow international cooperation because it would be a long list that you can find it on the participants portal. But this is just an example of calls uh, that they satisfy some criteria that we were just trying to bear in mind. But the, the, there are calls for which uh, international cooperation, even if it's not targeted to our area of the Middle East and North Africa, international cooperation is feasible and is, uh, is possible. Um, Plus, uh, there are 30 flagship initiatives of large scale and scope on topics dedicated to international cooperation in areas of mutual benefit. These are highly, um, it's a highly technological uh, projects involved. And then, as I say, examples, for example, all the topics, uh, six topics across the course in migration and societal challenge. Um, and then, as I said, I didn't put a list of all the international cooperation uh, topics uh, that you can apply uh, to, but in the link here, you can see um, you will be taken directly to the international cooperation, uh, all the topics uh, that have uh, international cooperation as a flagship. Um, another aspect of the work, and this is the last uh, thing about the work programs before I leave the floor to Davide Menero, is that uh, the work programs also involve focus areas. This is interesting because it shows uh, these focus areas are areas that want to be um, particularly strengthened, and this will happen across different uh, um, uh, pill across the different pillars. Um, of the of the of Horizon 2020. So calls in, in uh, societal challenges can be will uh, complement the calls in other pillars uh, to satisfy uh, the focus areas, which are um, building a low carbon climate resilient future, connecting economic and environmental gains at the circular economy. Digitizing and transforming European industry and services and boosting the effectiveness of the security union. Uh, this is all for me, so I leave the floor to Davide Menero for its a part of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Virginia, for the good introduction. Thanks to everybody. And uh, I will start my presentation and I will share the screen.
Uh, so it is here. Okay. Here it is. Okay. Perfect. So. Okay, as it's written over here, I would like to start my presentation. Okay, I would like to start the presentation by talking about the fourth industrial revolution and the digital market strategy that has already been introduced by Virginia in some parts of the pro work programs. The presentation will be uh, organized as follows. It will be based on what is Industry 4.0, I will discuss a little bit about the digital single market strategy of, of the European Commission and uh, uh, the, the, the link with the fourth industrial revolution topic. And I will discuss about the digitizing European industry, which is, let's say, a subtopic of uh, the European Commission, which is specifically targeted at the digitizing industry in Europe and beyond. Let's start by discussing about the fourth industrial revolution and what it is. Now, what is the fourth industrial revolution? It is a group of rapid transformation in several aspects of production. It is in design, in manufacturing and related systems, products and services, in order to make, let's say, everything connected. It is the use of digital technologies in order to make disruptive changes in the value chain all over the sectors, the industrial sector, agri-food sector, in the societal sectors, and so on. As it was defined by the Chancellor uh, Angela Merkel, it is the comprehensive transformation of the whole sphere of industrial production through the merging of the digital technology and the internet with conventional industry. Now, it is the fourth industrial revolution after the three that we experienced in the last centuries. The first one, it was about mechanizing steam power and wave and loom. Second one, it was mass production, assembly line and electrical energy. And third one, it was automation computers. And finally, we're going to the industry 4.0 paradigm. Now, there are some key words that need to be reminded when discussing about Industry 4.0 that are the key words that come many times in many work programs and in many polit politics of the uh, European Commission. We have, of course, the world ICT in general, but we have the world cyber physical system and in particular Internet of Things that are programs that are uh, exactly focused on that issue. Network communication, which is the capacity and say to create communication between devices, humans and computers and so on. Simulation, data collection and big data. In particular, big data is a very important topic because it is, let's say, the major topic that links all the other elements together and which is linked to the concept of cloud computing, which is the capacity to store information on the cloud so as to make further analysis possible. Then we have artificial intelligence, AI and robotics, augmented reality and intelligent tools and additive manufacturing, everybody knows it is 3D printing in general. Now, Discussing about Industry 4.0 and the Fourth Industrial Revolution, which is a broader concept, what is the major impact that uh, the, the new revolution will have? On one side, production flexibility, for sure. I mean, making it more possible, interaction, communication between all the actors of the value chain, and in particular, also the relationship and communication made, made, is made easier. With the final customers, of course, there is a demand for higher flexibility in order to target the customers and the market in a more customized way. Speed, speed of production, quality of production because of higher technology that is involved in the production process, higher productivity, more involvement of the customers. We are experiencing at the moment a situation where customers are giving more and more their feedbacks on products and on services and products that they would like to receive in the future. Then it will change location and also the way the work is organized. I mean, 
working at home, working in the office. It will be more and more easy to change the paradigm by favoring also inclusion of people that up to now were not able, let's say, to participate, to bring their uh, talent to the table and new business models, new business models, which is linked to the concept also of big data that we've said previously, which is how do we make good use of the information that we have at the internal level and how can we use the information that we can grasp also all along the value chains in several sectors in order to create new products, new services, and in one word, to foster innovation. Of course, the fourth industrial revolution will have disruptive consequences on uh, the society as we know it nowadays. We are already experiencing it. We cannot stop it, but the challenges that are, let's say, linked to the new revolutions are many. Challenges that, has, that have to do with the financial resources that could be found in order to uh, finance the change. So investments from the public side and from the private side. Elements such as data ownership and security will be of paramount importance. Let's imagine if all the enterprises and manufacturing companies will put all their data online, it will be of paramount importance to have them protected from external attacks. Legal issues, legal issues concerning aspects of uh, ownership of data, for instance, but also of uh, possible technologies that will completely change the relationships between, uh, uh, between the actors. Let's imagine the use that can be done with the blockchain technology in the sense that will favor and will uh, make easy the transaction in terms also of buying and selling specific projects of to uh, have contracts that will be legalized in, uh, in, uh, only by participating to a specific platform. Standards, which has to do with communication of machines and machine to machine and human to machine, that has to be made easier in order to favor a better integration of the markets in several parts of Europe and the world. Plus, of course, the new paradigm will require new skills and the development of new skills. Now, going to uh, the technologies that we have already mentioned, these are the ones that are mentioned explicitly in the work programs of the European Commission, cyber physical systems and Internet of Things, big data, robotics, and artificial intelligence. Now, if we want to analyze the aspect uh, from the business side and from the government side and from the side of the society, we have to consider that there will be several effects that will take place in the next years and that are already taking place at the moment. I mean, on the business side, of course, it drastically modifies customer expectations, product enhancement, collaborative innovation, and organizational forms as we previously mentioned already. The new technologies make assets more durable and resilient, and data and analytics change the way that they are maintained. We, we know, for instance, the uh, issue of servitization, which is selling a product like a machine, plus selling also consulting services, which is the assistance that is related to the machine. On the government side, we will have also changes as the new technologies increasingly enable citizens to engage with governments, while governments gain more and more tools to increase their control on population, of course, we will see a change of paradigm in relationship in terms of participation from a bottom-up participation from the citizen side, but on the other side also, the need for governments also to use new tools in order to engage and create engagement in order, let's say, to favor better integration and to favor social development. And on social aspects on people, the greatest challenges is on privacy, as we might know. As data becomes the oil of the new revolution, also awareness about the use of data, awareness about the potential of data, and also uh, ways of uh, being remunerating for giving data to some platforms or to some private providers, of course, will be of paramount importance 
because it will be basically also an element of discussion in the next years going on. We go and we'll jump directly into the programs of the European Commission concerning the digitization and the industrial, the fourth industrial revolution. One of the uh, priority of the European Commission is the creation of the digital single market. And it is contained inside the, the Europe 2020 strategy. What is the digital single market? It is the market that wants to bolster the use of digital technologies at European level and beyond the European market. Now, it has been estimated according to some studies that the contribution of the digital single market all in Europe, it will be of 450 billion per year. But the opportunities are not limited to the European continent, but it, is, it will extend worldwide. There are programs on digitization in the United States. There are programs in China. There are, of course, products everywhere in the world and in Middle East, it will be also pushed in the next years. Now, digital single market is built on the three pillars. I will make it brief. Access to technologies, environment, so as to make the development of the market possible, and economy and society, which basically means the application of the new technologies to the economic field. Now, it is supposed to help small and medium enterprises large enterprises, researchers, and public authorities that, thanks to the adoption and the use of the new technologies, will gain and will innovate their, uh, their offer uh, in, the, in the years to come. Now, digitizing European industry is a branch, let's say, of the digital single market, which is aimed at favoring the digitization of the industry. As it was mentioned previously by Virginia, you should not be uh, afraid of the fact that it's, of course, based on uh, European industry here, because new forms of collaboration and forms of collaboration in projects financed by the EU Commission is definitely possible in order anyway also to get information, to gain knowledge that could be transferred in terms of technology, in terms of skills, in terms also of new business models at local level. Now, digitizing European industry is a strategy that wants to favor disrupting innovation, also more risk-taking innovation, to uh, increase efficiency, to improve the processes at the industrial level. And when I think about industry, when I say industry, I mean every kind of industry. It could be also the touristic industry, for instance, and to create new innovative products and services. Now, per year, the impact of, uh, of the, the strategy of digitizing European industry only in Europe is supposed to generate 110 billion revenue. Now, these are the five pillars of the strategy. We have digital innovation hubs, strengthening leadership through partnerships and industrial platforms, also online platforms, in order to favor sharing of data and open data in the case of the European Commission, which is the possibility to make data available to a wider public so as to uh, create new products and services starting from that. Uh, new laws, I mean, a new regulatory framework for the digital age. New skills on the bottom right, preparing European for the digital future. And of course, there are nationality initiatives that are coordinated from above. Let's say so. Now, in terms of financing, it is aimed at mobilizing 50 billion of public and private investments in the, in the next years. 37 billion investments only to boost digital innovation, 5.5 for national and regional investments, 6.3 billion for the first production lines of next generation electronic components, like also disrupting new technologies like the uh, FET FET that has been previously presented by uh, Virginia, plus 6.7 for the European Cloud Initiative. Now, 
the industry 4.0 is a challenge and a unique opportunity also in this moment. But it is not an opportunity only for the European countries, as I said previously, but it is an opportunity also for the Middle East and North African counters, uh, countries. Why? because it aims to change the paradigm for what concerns socioeconomic and demographic factors in the future, new occupation, new uh, skills, but also new works, new jobs that could be possible thanks to the adoption of the new technologies, new skills requirements in terms also of new possibilities to uh, work in the training sector in order to let's say upskill already current generation and also future generation for the new revolution. New types of organization and new coordination of works thanks to the use, for instance, of platform that will make communication between companies of the value chain easier and new tools to augment workers' capabilities. In this case, we can talk also about automation, we can talk about artificial intelligence and robots. As presented in the uh, document of the World Economic Forum, a recent document uh, that discusses about the future of jobs in the Middle East and North African countries, we can see that some of the major drivers of change are of course related to the fourth industrial revolution. We see cloud technology at number two, for instance, then we see also a processing power and big data number 10, artificial intelligence number 12, plus if we go back to number 11, sharing economy and cloud sourcing. The major element of sharing economy and crowdsourcing is the use of online platforms that make exchange of information possible thanks to the use of a simple device that is connected online and will make you, for instance, capable of renting a car or anyway, of having access also to a machine inside an industry. Anyway, just some data that are taken out of the, of the document. Here, we can see the job automation estimation in some of the counties in the, in the region. As we can see, we can see a big change in the sense that if it is an opportunity to change the production processes and to increase productivity and to make innovation thanks to the use of the new technologies. Of course, we need to be aware that it is risk in terms of occupation, in terms of employment. Therefore, there is also a good opportunity that is present inside the work programs for retraining, for changing the paradigm and so for preparing future generation for the change. Now, what are some of the aspects that need to be taken into account when dealing with the fourth industrial revolution in the uh, Middle East and North African uh, uh, region? It is that some sectors will become of paramount of importance and some of the sectors will definitely also change and will be the ones to focus on in the next years. One, of course, it has to do with the infrastructure investments that will be necessary in order to foster the new revolution. Child care, elder care, and education facilities. We will go basically in line with all the changes triggered by the new technologies. I mean, in terms of child care, we can imagine also new tools for training the, the, the young generation. And elder care, also new elements like robots and other possible devices that will help also take care of the old people. Plus, the, the element that needs to be taken into account is the fact that the major element or one of the major elements that will be of paramount importance in order for this revolution to be, let's say, uh, approached correctly is investments in human capital. Because as Machines, let's say, will substitute some of the work that are manually done at the moment. It will necessary that will necessary need that it will necessarily mean that it will uh, it will be necessary to have uh, humans that are more capable also to uh, let's say program the machine to be created in order to find new solutions to the problems and to the challenges thanks to the use of the new technology. Now, 
just to go finally, and I will go straight to the end because otherwise I take too much time. Uh, the, 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 the new revolution will require also more private and public collaboration, uh, public-private partnerships in particular, and uh, these will make more impossible, uh, more investments possible and more reforms possible. It will make the uh, workforce of tomorrow and of today more capable to adapt to the changes and the economy of tomorrow to thrive which basically means also that some of the elements that are contained in the programs that Leonardo will talk about later foresee higher collaboration between the private side and the public side, because as the changes will be so disruptive, there is a need to bring together several stakeholders, academia, uh, uh, NGOs, uh, private companies, and uh, of course uh, uh, public authorities in order to discuss and uh, to, to pilot also new solutions in the new uh, digital context. And uh, I will stop here. Elements that we'll need to take into account are uh, attention to the curricula, the necessity to invest in digital fluency and ICT literacy skills, exposure to workplace and career guidance, creating a culture of lifelong learning because adaptability will be uh, necessary in the years to come and will be more and more important in order to adapt to a world that is changing very fast. I mean, as it is always repeated, the fourth industrial revolution is about forerunners, people that have uh, uh, in first place, new solutions will be the one that will be able to conquer the market. As in, you will see in the next presentation, uh, the uh, work programs foresee all the elements that have been uh, discussed so far through specific actions that will boost and uh, will, yes, will boost all the elements that will favor the transition towards the new digital society. I want to thank you all for the attention and I will stop sharing here and I will give the floor to uh, Leonardo for the next presentation. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, David. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, uh, before the question and answer session is to share with you the uh, how in, in this case the, the the digital uh, revolution in particular, the link to, to the previous uh, presentation uh, will be extremely relevant. Uh, and I think this is a, a very, very important from us is to give an overview about the, the, an important aspect of uh, how H 2020 will be focusing in, uh, in these areas. So uh, it's already been uh, uh, said from Virginia, from David, uh, why this uh, uh, an important uh, policy contest uh, will be uh, very uh, focusing for some specific topics. Uh, what I'm going to do now um, uh, will be very focusing to or some specific uh, key enabled technologies, in particular information communication and innovation in age 2020. Uh, I agree what David was mentioned about the education facility, childcare, the infrastructures are extremely important, but we need to also remember in the fourth industrial revolution, there is a key important pillar about social, economic and cultural transformation. And that's why the European Union is being quite uh, involved uh, in, in the social, economic, cultural transformation activities in, in age 2020. So, uh, as uh, it's been already mentioned in terms of policy contest and the political guidelines by the, uh, the Commissioner uh, President uh, Juncker in uh, July 2014, the main important aspect it was to focus into a key important uh, pillar from the investment for the job creation from the digital single market and from the resilient energy and to have a very strong role by the Europe in, uh, in the global actors. And in particular, uh, from the Commission in Moedas, which is in charge from the 
science and technology and innovation portfolio. Open science, open to the world, and open innovation are the key word uh, related to the, to the context of the uh, of the European policies. Uh, just to go back to the to the what is David was mentioned in order to see how Europe uh, PM competitiveness is uh, it will be extremely relevant uh, for the concept of the key enabled technologies from the. Uh, graphics has been uh, uh, designed. Uh, you can see there is a very strong uh, impact uh, in terms of uh, materials, in terms of robotics, in terms of nanotechnology, in terms of uh, clean, smart manufacturing, in terms of uh, textile, uh, biomaterial, uh, tree printing uh, are extremely relevant. So these are uh, all key elements for the key enabled technology. To give us a clear picture that the the fourth uh, industrial revolution is going to the direction uh, which is uh, uh, very important to boosting the innovation technology in the, in the new economy. And in particular, if uh, we are considering uh, in age 2020, there is a big important pillar uh, uh, which is mentioned from Virginia, from the excellent science, from the societal challenge, from the industrial leadership. And in particular, in industrial leadership, ICT, nanomaterial, uh, uh, biotechnology, uh, and processing are key important role. As you can see from uh, uh, these studies being created also uh, from the GRC in, in the past, the, the, this collaboration of the uh, K-enabled technology are uh, extremely relevant also the impact uh, from the uh, climate change for transport, for energy, for agriculture. Now, just to give an example now, uh, the European Union is very focusing to some specific uh, area in, in agriculture, which is very traditional sector, like a small, uh, smart farming, uh, internet of things uh, for agriculture, using also new technology uh, also it's going to be very interesting to see the impact of the other industrial technology even in all in ICT balls in space so the president Juncker political guidelines in particular for the digital single market has been uh, uh, very uh, address the fact that uh, the an issues uh, is uh, related to the regulation to the copyright to the data protection in, in, in particular uh, related to the application of competition law. We need to remember that uh, in European level, the single market, uh, eight, uh, 28 member states, one of the key aspects uh, for be very novel, uh, innovative is also the competition aspects. So the three pillar was mentioned from Davide, which is uh, clearly uh, focusing from the package from access to the environment to the economic society uh, will be very interesting to see the aspect uh, uh, for each of them that might be would be useful to go uh, directly to see how the digital single market works and in particular if you see the first pillar which is uh, traditionally the e-commerce have a very important boost in the last few years the consumer protections become uh, and important issues. And of course, uh, they enforce the, uh, those rules is become uh, more to reviewing uh, the regulation of the consumer and protection corporation activities, considering now there will be more an efficient and affordable parcel deliverable across the border and to unjustify job blocking activities in, in these areas. The second uh, important aspect of this pillar is also to, to make more uh, launching a potential competition of European e-commerce market uh, and antitrust competition inquiry to the e-commerce sectors in the European Union, which is uh, developed more uh, efficient a European copyright law. That's why the copyright law will become extremely relevant in innovation, in the standards, in terms of regime. And of course, we need to see at European level the satellite cable directive uh, to 
enlarge the broadcast and online transmission to boost the cross-border uh, services in Europe. And we need to also consider from the tax burden aspect uh, is the difference uh, VAT regime that we have facing uh, in Europe uh, is one of the key aspects. The second pillar, which is uh, reviewing the EU telecom rules, which is uh, more uh, an impact for an investment for high speed uh, broadband. We need to remember that when we talk about innovation uh, and research from age 2020, we have a lot of work has been done in the past in the previous form, uh, framework programs in terms of project and, and a specific uh, program in, uh, in the telecommunication. And in particular, what is the role of the member states levels is being done in terms of uh, infrastructures for high speed broadband. So just to give an example now in terms of uh, audiovisual media frameworks is we now promoting the European works and the role of the online platforms uh, like social media, Apple stores will be uh, extremely important. Uh, David was mentioned also the reinforcement of the transfer security in the digital service. At the moment, uh, there is uh, on the on the on the way at European level a review of the e-privacy directive. There will be also strong collaboration with industries in the cyber security and technology online in, in these areas. Uh, the third important pillar, uh, which is uh, 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 important in terms of uh, the European Cloud Initiative covering, uh, in this case, a uh, certification and to provide the new research cloud. We be also define priorities for standard interoperability in the digital uh, single market. Just to give an example, an example of energy. When we talk about energy in, 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 in digitalization, it's been done quite a lot work in, in the previous programs in a smart metering. But the problem is not just to focus only to the technology of the smart metering, but how is the social acceptance by the citizen to understand in this a new digital society. That's why, go back to the David presentation, the right skill and the opportunities in the internet are uh, give uh, more chance to get the jobs. An e-government uh, action plan by uh, European Union has been launched in, in the last uh, few, few years. So what I'm saying ICT, information, communication, technologies, innovation, which is the key important aspect. In the past, there was a huge amount of activities of, in, in R&D, spending in information communication in terms of uh, budget. But I think uh, what is also in the future of the FP9, Commission and Moedas, is very focusing to the innovation. We also creation of the new European Innovation Council. And that is uh, why Horizon 2020 uh, with the more than 80 billion of euros uh, budget, the biggest, largest European uh, research and innovation program is being combined to have a different uh, uh, research and innovation fund in one single program. So just to give an overview in terms of the societal challenge concern about information communication technologies, uh, is already mentioned the ICT is very strong focusing to the uh, health, food security, energy efficiency, and uh, climate change. So those are uh, uh, simplified the rules in particular to all companies, university institutions uh, in Europe and in particular beyond Europe. So this is a, a, a very important aspect we should be considering. And in particular, since uh, uh, 2014, is more than 1 billion euros being available in, in information communication technology projects uh, related to, to build these uh, innovators in, in Europe uh, and beyond. And in particular, to create more an entrepreneur ICT ecosystem to demanding helping uh, entrepreneur to take the risk of this company to the world. So the major uh, important aspect is to increase in this demand of innovation. How? Increasing public demand, for instance, like innovation procurement, public contract awarded uh, through the uh, innovative solution. That's why this public private uh, 
partnership will be extremely important. But also to drive research through new price, uh, uh, like uh, the uh, in age 2020, there are now specific uh, price uh, for demand disease. And of course, to improving these uh, entrepreneurs take the risk and the company to grow in the finance innovation. So there is uh, some specific uh, area in age 2020, like uh, this disruption innovation scheme, an SMEs instrument to, to support a large group of early stage innovative uh, small business can be focused into the new product services and process. So that's why this is a new concept of to create this entrepreneur ICT ecosystem is to uh, connecting the entrepreneur through an ICT entrepreneurship lab. So this experimental space uh, between entrepreneur students, researchers, public uh, campaign to uh, take this culture of the risk in Europe. And of course, there's a new generation of ICT entrepreneurs, they're given opportunities to also change this uh, new business model in the universities. The majority of the time that we've been working in the universities, been working with the educational university and R&D universities, uh, very, very strong focus into research universities, but not to have a very strong entrepreneurial university. I want to close uh, 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 my, my short uh, presentation just to give an overview that there is an effect that in age 2020, uh, there is a big uh, an impact for transformation of the fourth industrial revolution, in particular in a social, economic and cultural transformation. Just to give an overview, now in a moment we have a different school in uh, uh, transformation in a social challenge uh, from uh, social science, which is uh, very focusing to the digital access of digitalization, very strong involvement of uh, urban environment. Uh, it is also quite important to remember that uh, in Europe, uh, but in particular in this case in the MENA region, the population, the aggregate population are more focusing to the urban area. That's why we are now discussing no anymore uh, only uh, urban and the rural setting uh, diversified. That's why we are talking about in particular uh, related to the urban regional development, focusing to the cultural tourism, focusing to the uh, uh, identity for culture will be uh, extremely relevant. So as you can see from here, uh, from the new launching program that was mentioned from Virginia, in particular in 2018, 19 and 20, there will be different school in uh, uh, social, economic, cultural transformation in the fourth industrial revolution. And I think this is one of the role of the merit project uh, we should be focusing from us in particular to supporting the collaboration in, in the different sectors through the uh, matchmaking, uh, the brokerage, but also the coaching activities uh, through this project. Uh, I want to stop here my presentation. I leave the floor now to uh, Virginia in order to open any session, any question. And I believe that this is a, a very important for us to get the feedback from the participants to oh, say that uh, this is a, uh, an important moment that we are going to focus in now in, in, in the future. Virginia? One second. Virginia. Yes. Uh, thank you, Leonardo, and thank you, Davide, for your presentations. Very interesting. And um, at the moment, uh, I don't see, I mean, if you have any questions uh, to all the participants, uh, you're welcome to write them in the chat so we can provide an answer. Uh, I'm anticipating that uh, um, in case we have no, no questions, uh, we will close the webinar and uh, the webinar has been recorded. So the recording will be available on the Merit website in the relevant section, uh, section uh, where you can find uh, the, the, the information about uh, the, the second webinar and will be uh, available for, uh, you will find a link that will take you to the recording. Uh, 
So we are here and um, please, uh, you're welcome if you want to ask uh, anything rela in relation to the actual presentation. I can open uh, now the mic if uh, there is anyone is, is interested to introduce themselves, uh, why they, they want to, 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 to join us. And I think it would be useful for, for the married also to be in touch with, with the people. So if you have any, any question, you can use the internal chat. You just, um, just have to turn on uh, the, um, the final. You have to select everyone on the, on the menu at the bottom of the chat and you can write your feedback. You can send us your feedback by this chat if you have anyone. Okay, another suggestion um, can be uh, uh, once a recording has been uh, uh, is, is available on the married website, um, anybody uh, viewing it and everybody interested in um, uh, some aspects or some elements uh, within the, 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 the webinar uh, can still get in touch with us. You know, you have our email addresses, uh, Leonardo, myself, and, um, and David, eh? and uh, we can further develop. Uh, we can uh, um, we can still answer to your uh, questions, you know, directly by email, and we can also think about uh, uh, complementing or integrating uh, that page on, on Merit uh, with uh, uh, some useful questions and answers that can be uh, beneficial to uh, all the Merit uh, participants um, or to the people that link to them and just become like a public uh, question and answers. So if there is uh, anything, uh, I would uh, ask uh, Leonardo what he thinks. Maybe we can stop the recording. And, um, and uh, thanks again for your participation. And as I said, uh, the recording will be available and we can follow up with questions and answer making public. Okay. Making them public. Thank you very much for everyone. I'm going to close here the session. <laughs>